In this video, I'm going to go through the calculation of the liability for remaining coverage under the Premium Allocation Approach, or PAA. Just to revise the three different approaches, we actually have the General Measurement Model, the Variable Fee Approach, and the Premium Allocation Approach. These are three different methods or three different approaches to valuing the liability for remaining coverage. In this video, we're just going to go through the premium allocation approach. But I just want to emphasize that this premium allocation approach differs from the GMM and the VFA in principle in that it looks retrospectively to calculate the liability for remaining coverage, whereas the GMM and the VFA looks at things prospectively. So let me write that down. And the reason why PAA looks at things retrospectively is because it looks at events that have already happened in the past and in the current period to determine the actual liability. Whereas the GMM and the VFA looks at what is about to happen in the future and adjustments to those that affect the liability. Now, what is the liability for remaining coverage? Well, the liability is really the obligation for the insurer to pay or to fulfill before the insured event has actually occurred. So under the premium allocation approach, the standard actually specifies how you measure this liability on initial recognition and at the end of each subsequent reporting period. So what's important to notice is that at initial recognition and on subsequent reporting periods, any premiums that come in actually increase the liability. So let's put that down. So premiums. Let me write it in black. Uh, so premiums, premiums, premiums that come in increase the liability. Okay. Now that's in opposite to any acquisition cash flows paid, because one way to think about it is. The insurer is selling a product to the customer. Now, in order to sell this product, the insurer may have to do some underwriting, some research, some hoops for the customer to jump through. Some costs will be associated with running those research or underwriting or brokerage before the contract is actually sold to the customer, and those are uh, called acquisition costs to acquire the business. So those are costs borne by the insurer. On the other side, once the green light is given, the insurer will actually receive premiums from the customer in return to be able to initiate this contract. So the contract can only start if the underwriting and all of the acquisition costs typically are paid. So when acquisition costs come out of the insurer as a cash outflow, so acquisition costs out, that reduces the liability. Because one way you can think about it is that it represents some type of obligation that the insurer has already fulfilled in order to even issue this contract in the first place. Okay. So these two amounts are represented by these two parts, premiums and acquisition cash flows on initial recognition. Typically, there won't be many or much derecognition of things at the issuance or at the recognition date, um, unless you apply some options under the premium allocation approach. So we won't talk about those options in this video. So how does this work in practice in terms of a simplified example? 
So in this example, we have a contract length of two years. Typically, only contracts that are 12 months or lower can be measured under the premium allocation approach for the liability for remaining coverage. There are eligibility testing that you need to go through uh, in order to be able to use the premium allocation approach for contract uh, with boundaries over 12 months, but we won't go into those details in this video. So for this example, we are going to assume that premiums are $1,000 paid up front, acquisition costs are paid from the insurer to externals, $200 up front, and claims are $100 per year, and premium is earned evenly over two years. So that means that for premiums, we're going to earn $500 per year. So $500 premium revenue per year. And acquisition expenses allocated, we're going to assume is $100 of acquisition expense per year. So, when we actually do initial recognition, all the premiums that come to us are initially going to be increasing the liability for remaining coverage. Okay, so LFRC, and then we paid 200 of acquisition costs. So that would come to decreasing the liability for remaining coverage. So that means that our total liability for remaining coverage at the end of the period or at initial recognition is $800. So now let's go to the subsequent reporting periods. So under the subsequent reporting periods, we still, just like at initial recognition, will increase the liability for remaining coverage for any premiums received in the period. We also minus any insurance acquisition cash flows for any of those paid during that reporting period. But what we need to pay attention to for this example is the amortization of these costs and also the amount recognized as insurance revenue. There are other things that we need to adjust for, for example, the fi any financing effect and any investment components paid or transferred, but we won't worry about those in this video. So let's go back to our example and let's see what happens with the amortization of the insurance acquisition cash flows and the amount recognized as insurance revenue. So now on the subsequent measurement, Subsequent measurement, we start off with 800. So that's our starting point because that's the opening balance of our liability for remaining coverage. Now we actually don't have any more premium or acquisition cash flows. So our liability for remaining coverage is only adjusted by what we know that we're earning or expensing throughout the year. So we know that through our $200 of acquisition costs paid upfront, we're going to recognize or expense 100 of that in the first year. So in the first year, when we expense it or when we recognize it, we're going to increase our liability for remaining coverage by 100. However, we uh, have also recognized that we've really performed enough service to earn $500 of premium. So that's the $500 of premium. So de-recognizing the liability by 500, increasing the liability by 100, it means our final liability drops down to 400. So that's our closing balance 
availability for remaining coverage when measured under the premium allocation approach. Now, notice that the claims of $100 doesn't come into the calculation of the premium allocation approach uh, to calculate the liability for remaining coverage. This is because in this approach, the claims of 100 goes directly into expense. The premium allocation approach only considers cash flows that are premiums or acquisition costs and earnings that are premiums or acquisition costs and any time value adjustment of money. And nothing in there relates to claims. Claims are actually considered in the general measurement model and the variable fee approach. And for more information on that, please refer to my GMM and the VFA videos.